This is David Vinokur, consultant, obstetrician and gynaecologist. Welcome to this video on female hormones and the menstrual cycle. So what is a hormone? A hormone is a chemical molecule that is produced in special cells within a gland. Hormones are released into the bloodstream and then travel to distant responsive cells and tissues where they exhibit characteristic effects. Glands that secrete hormones into the bloodstream are called endocrine glands. The study of hormones is called endocrinology. Doctors who specialize in hormones are called endocrinologists. Doctors who specialize in reproductive hormones are called reproductive endocrinologists. A hormone acts like a key fitting into a lock and this produces a characteristic response. We call the locks hormone receptors. Here we have a hormone, in this case insulin, and an insulin receptor. And the receptor acts like a lock and the insulin the key. And hormones have to fit very exactly into the receptor site. Hormones are extremely potent. They are released in tiny amounts and their effects are profound. For example, an estradiol implant that is used to treat menopausal symptoms is smaller than an air gun pellet and the amount of estradiol, the active estrogen hormone, is less than one twentieth of a gram. This is enough for one year to maintain generalized well-being and relieve menopausal symptoms. Estrogens are the fundamental hormones in the development of feminization, including their effects on the uterus and the menstrual cycle, and pregnancy when that occurs. They are responsible for the typical womanly shape, including breast development and the development of the external genitalia. A woman's skin tends to be softer. Oestrogens also have a fundamental role in emotion. Progesterone is a pro-pregnancy hormone. It modifies the estrogenic effects on the uterus, breasts and emotion. The main reproductive hormones are derived from cholesterol. The chemistry of the molecules is not very different. Here we have progesterone, this is estradiol, and between them is testosterone, which is a male type hormone, although all women have some testosterone, just as all men have some estrogen, but the ratios are very different, obviously, between men and women. The menstrual cycle is under the control of a little gland at the base of the brain called the pituitary. The pituitary is itself controlled by the hypothalamus, which is a little glandular area of the brain just above the pituitary. The hypothalamus produces gonadotrophin releasing hormone or GnRH. The pituitary releases two hormones, follicle stimulating hormone or FSH and luteinizing hormone LH. These travel in the blood where they have effects on the ovaries. The ovaries of a baby girl will contain all the eggs, all the ova, that she will ever have throughout her life. Initially there are maybe one or two million of these eggs and most of them are lost over the next 50 or so years. But a few develop and are responsible for the hormones of the menstrual cycle 
and also one of them can become a baby. At the early stage of the menstrual cycle, just after menstruation, an egg in a follicle develops, and this is called an, a follicle. The developing follicle gradually reaches maturity, and then under the influence of the rise and fall of LH, the egg is released. The follicle changes its nature, it now becomes yellow and is called a corpus luteum. The corpus luteum not only releases oestrogen, it also releases progesterone. If the egg is not fertilized, the corpus luteum dies and the progesterone levels and the oestrogen levels fall. The lining of the uterus, we call the endometrium, during menstruation the lining is shed and then under the influence of rising levels of oestrogen the endometrium proliferates, it thickens and we call this the proliferative phase. Following egg release, ovulation, the endometrium contains a secretory fluid and this can nourish the early embryo if the egg has been fertilized. The second half of the cycle, the lining, is therefore called the secretory phase. The hormones also affect the cervical mucus, the little fluid held within the cervical canal, the neck of the womb. For most of the menstrual cycle, the mucus is quite thick and impenetrable to sperm. However, around the time of egg release, ovulation, the mucus becomes relatively thin and very stretchy, and sperm can travel up it. As a quick overview, in the first half of the cycle, as far as the ovaries are concerned, we have follicular development, and this is the follicular phase. And at that time, the oestrogen is causing the lining of the uterus to proliferate, and that's called the proliferative phase. In the second half of the cycle, the corpus luteum is releasing not only oestrogen, but progesterone as well. This is called the luteal phase, as far as the ovaries are concerned. During this time, the effect of the progesterone is to cause secretion within the endometrium. As far as the lining of the uterus is concerned, we call this the secretory phase. It is important to understand reproductive hormones and the menstrual cycle when considering hormone contraception, reduced or absent menstruation, infertility, premenstrual syndrome and menopause problems and hormone replacement therapy. This is David Vinokur. Thank you for watching this video.